Hey everybody, the Reswirl here, and welcome to Stalker Clear Sky. So about five or so years ago, I actually covered the first game in the Stalker series, but recently I had like a... well, actually not even recently, I've just been completely addicted to the series. So I thought, I'll go through the series, kind of back to back, but starting with Clear Sky because it's a prequel to Shadow of Chernobyl, and then go to Shadow of Chernobyl, Call of Pripyat, which are the ones that are set in stone. Like, they're ones I definitely want to do, but then I also have Lost Alpha, um, Wind of Time, and um, Oblivion Lost Remake. They're just mods, but they're pretty good as well. There might be another one. Oh, and Call of Chernobyl. But, as I say, the three mainline series are definitely happening. It's just the mods I'm not entirely sure of. Another thing to say, I'm not playing on Master, my game's really modified, and if you have a problem with that, I'm sorry, but it's how I'm playing the game. <laughs> Either way, I did actually try and do this the other day, and um, OBS decided to crap out on me for some reason. Actually, before I do anything, I really should have done this before I started, but never mind. I'll just delete all my saves. I'm actually kind of glad I had the saves, so that I could delete them. Uh, not delete them, so I could... Um, like, test around on them. Just to make sure that certain things were working. Why the hell is the image so screwed? That was weird. Alright, cool. Cancel. Alright, new game. Yeah, I'm playing on Stalker. So, uh, you know, I know most people play on Master, but I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I want to enjoy my game. But in terms of mods I have, it's Arsenal Overhaul 1.2 um, with the SRP 1.1.2. Atmosphere, and just a bunch of other tweaks that I did myself. So, like, increasing the spawn time for faction squads. Um, hit probability increased, carry weight increased, just a lot of stuff. But I've played this, like, 30 to 40 hours. <laughs> In the past week. Actual fact, we have nothing to worry about. According to our research, the next emission will not occur for at least two months, four days, and seven hours. Mm. Its intensity will be three on the Bergman scale, which is 2.13. There's a few other mods as well, like mini mods, like UI changes and um, the portrait for our character. There's probably some others that I'm forgetting, but. Whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. It looks like they should have wiped out those trees. My goodness. Without going into detail, I must say I have never seen anything like this before. The encephalogram suggests serious damage to the nervous system, but the other indicators couldn't be better. It's... it's astounding. Perhaps it has something to do with the emission. Most certainly. Although so far I've been utterly unable to formulate a rational explanation for this abnormality. Look. God, I wish they didn't get quieter as the camera panned away from them. It's so hard to hear them. Thankfully, they do give you subtitles. Weirdly enough, though, they don't give subtitles to Lebedev in this next scene, and I don't really understand why. Yeah, it's just very odd. I mean, that, that it gives it for that, but that's it. Everything else is nothing. My head's splitting and spinning too. Basically, I'm in real good shape. Do you remember what happened to you? Okay, I remember leading an expedition through the swamps, bunch of scientists, then the emission. That's it. Where am I? Is this heaven? Then why does it look so much like the zone? In the joking mood, eh? Of course. Well for your recovery. I'm Libede, the group leader, and I'm responsible for everyone here. That includes you for as long as you're here. 
We call ourselves Clear Sky, and you are in our base right now. We pick you up in the swamps after the emission. Oh, I guess I got lucky then. Lucky? I doubt. The facts are these. You survived the emission. That's the first thing I still can't explain. The second thing is that our patrol found you in the swamps, which are essentially endless quicksand. And thirdly, you nearly got torn into shreds by a pack of pseudodogs, but our boys got you out just in time. Such a chain of events tells me it's more than just luck. Anyway, I need to finish what I'm doing, so let's continue this conversation later. Okay. Bye, Lebedev. His feet or legs just look really weird. Yeah, they just do. It's just the way they look. Uh, should be in control any minute now. Hey, there we go. And that is just one odd thing. The only thing that's really changed in terms of, like, when I did this the other day, is I increased the spawn rate from the squads. That wasn't in the game before. Um, I lowered how quickly my health regens, because for some reason I had that set way too high. And also... I can't remember what else. Oh yeah, I've got... I haven't got full dynamic lighting on, because this game... Literally every stalker game has a really odd... Like, lighting bug. It's like you've got a cone of light in front of you, but as you get closer you can see it moving forwards and backwards, and it's just really odd. I do have my PDA. Message log. Oh, okay. For some reason I thought this was laid out like, um, Shadow of Chernobyl where you'd have like a diary, but I guess not. Alright, cool. I suppose that, that's a good thing because then I don't have to spend a bunch of time just reading it. <laughs> but yeah, I've got like the UI, like my carrier weight's ridiculously high, but again, I don't care. No, the, the way the UI is laid out normally is the artifact things are over here, um, and your, your weapons point vertically. It's just, it's very odd with how it's laid out, and this looks so much nicer. Regardless, let's actually do what they said. Whee! I was waiting to break me legs. Barman! Okay. Hello, man. You became quite a legend while you were out of it. Even you wouldn't believe some of the rumors I've heard. <laughs> Anyways, here's a drink on the house for a lucky son of a gun. It should help you relax and tell me about your adventures, because I'm just dying of curiosity. Okay, there's not much to tell. I was leading a group of scientists through the swamp when an emission hit. I remember nothing after that. I regained consciousness here. So now, so now you tell me what happened. Well then, you drink and I'll tell you about this place. It used to be pretty quiet here. We had the paths worked out, the right places explored, and the approach covered. Of course, the swamps ain't exactly spring break material, but it wasn't too bad either. Yeah, it wasn't too bad until the last emission, the biggest we've ever seen. These days our boys pray both to God and the devil before going out of the base, because getting back alive is a miracle in its own right. But we're managing to hold it together, because our guys ain't here for loot. They're fighting for a cause. Okay, how did you end up here? Bottles one after another, and they let me hear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. The truth is, there was no place for me in that other world. They didn't want me. In the end, I came here. First to the zone, and then to Clear Sky. The guys here are alright, and I need it here. They come back here after a mission, I bought them a drink, tell a few dirty jokes, and my job is done. Simple, but effective. By the way, they call me Cole. Okay. Um, about this place, would you give me a clue as to where we are? In our base. As you can see, it's a small sinking farmstead in the middle of romantic endless swamps. <laughs> I couldn't tell you where it is exactly, but it's the last place in the zone where you can meet real people. The guys who won't screw you, stab you in the back one, and let you bleed to death to save a med kit. I don't know who would do that. I mean, if you were down to your last med kit, of course you'd use it to save someone else. <laughs> and not yourself. I'm no stranger to the zone, yet I've never heard about Clear Sky. How do things work here? You know why you've never heard of Because too many people want to know about it. And the fewer that do, the better. Lebedev is our leader. The man is a rock if ever 
I've seen. He's the glue that holds our whole group together. Then there's Beanpolet. <laughs> Professor Beanpolet. Best like name. He's a walking encyclopedia and a calculator in one. Knows more about the zone than that. Well, anyway. Our technician's called Gray. He can make you a rifle out of an empty can with ammo to boot. He could use some spears, but uh, apart from that. And finally, we have Suslo. He's a traitor, but he ain't like the others of his trade. He won't try to rip you off or screw you. He knows what stalkers go through to get their loot, and he respects that. Cole, leave the mark alone with your dirty jokes. I need to see him. Well done. If Ribedev says he needs to see him, that ain't up for a discussion. Go on. I'll catch you later. Stop by for a chat anytime. This place is so boring. God, the lip syncing is great. <laughs> to be fair, this game did come out in 2008, so... It, it's impressive for 2008. But, um, God, bloody bean polev. <laughs> Too good. I'm glad to see you, young man. You look considerably better. Why, thank you. I've seen all kind, All kinds? All types of folks in the zone. Some come here chasing their dreams, some in search of the zone's wonders, and some are just looking for loot. Why does Clear Sky study the zone? People are mistaken in their belief that they understand the essence of what the zone truly is. Some consider it to be a universal evil, others a wonder sent down to humanity, and others still consider it no more than a source of riches. They are all wrong. The zone is impossible to understand when viewed through the prism of human perception. Moreover, it is far too early for humans to even try. Ergo, the actions of both the government and stalkers with respect to the zone are misguided, and I fear that the potential consequences may be, or indeed are, completely unpredictable. Hmm. Naturally, this represents a terrible danger. So, what is the zone? Young man, if only I had the answer to that question. We are studying the zone meticulously in hopes of finding it. The zone appeared as a result of the actions, let's call them misguided human actions, and we are unable to return to the status quo. The zone cannot be destroyed, nor will it disappear of its own accord. We, Clear Sky, believe that there is only one way to reconcile man with the zone. Coexistence. Okay. Why is the zone having the shakes? Know anything about that? How can I best explain? Uh, let's put it like this. Any complicated system in nature, and that includes the zone, automatically seeks equilibrium in the absence of destabilizing external factors. That was the case here in recent years. The zone was stable and there were no significant deviations from the norm. And now? Now we've seen a gigantic emission that has changed the face of the zone. The system became unstable, distorted, a glitch of sorts. The zone is spewing out emission after emission and pumping itself full of energy with each one, so much so that the readings on my sensors oscillate with unbelievable speed. And unless we find a way of reversing this trend, the result will be a disaster of far greater proportions than the 1986 catastrophe. Mm. The most important lesson in all this is that this glitch is not a product of natural causes. This is human handiwork. I wish I knew whose it is. And that's what we are attempting to find out. Perhaps knowing who disrupted the zone's equilibrium will give us a chance to prevent a disaster. Is it really within man's power? Since man caused this mess in the first place, man may well be the only one able to set it right. In any event, I very much hope that is the case. What way exactly? What is the point of the rescue plan? I fear that question is not one I can answer. I suggest you address it to Lebedev. Lebedev. Okay. Hopefully my answers will be of help to us all. We shall see. Eventually. We have this fella who won't actually talk to us. But it's nimble! Dude, they haven't slept for three days. Or was it four? Let me catch some Z's. Oops. <laughs> Dude, please. <laughs> I didn't mean to talk to him twice. Lebedev. Got some fresh air? You look better, that's for sure. Let me fill you in on this situation. You're in the clear sky base. Don't try to remember who we are. You've never heard of us, and there's a very good reason for that. Our mission is to research the zone. We believe that the zone must be studied and understood so that humanity knows what it is facing here. Understanding is the key to coexisting with the zone. Because if you think about it, the zone is the most wondrous phenomenon humanity has been confronted with in its entire history. Alright. 
I should have probably said this sooner, but the beginning of this game has a tremendous amount of dialogue. <laughs> Why are you hiding? As I said, we are researchers. We are trying to figure out the nature of the zone, determine the reasons which caused it to appear, and formulate the rules that govern its existence. We are not consumed by a quest for money. We don't seek fields of artifacts, and we're not interested in turf wars with other factions. That is why we're hiding here in the swamps and concentrating on our research. Our forte is not combat, but knowledge. Knowledge of the zone. Knowledge. Accumulated over years of research. We know more about it than stalkers and the government combined. And our research was finally shaping up into a sound, coherent picture until the massive emission a few days ago. What was so peculiar about it? We've had emissions before. No. The emission was incredibly powerful. It was on a level of its own. It was like a hurricane that swept the whole zone, changing it. Everything is different. The well-known and relatively safe areas have become highly radioactive and full of anomalies. But now, you can access parts of the zone that have been unreachable for years. Even the most hardened stalkers don't know what awaits them on their favorite path. The other thing that changed is people, and that became evident right away. The emission destroyed the fragile balance between factions, and they're now warring for territory. In other words, many strange things have happened, and I don't yet fully understand the scale of these changes. It's only been a few days since the emission. If you ask me, the strangest thing of all is that you managed to survive it. I was just about to say, how long have we been out? Because they made it sound like it's been a while, but it's only been a couple days. Even still, that's quite a drastic change for just a few days. If I knew how I survived, I'd tell you in a second, but I don't remember anything. I see. How can I help you? I'd better leave. I'm pretty beat up, but I can still walk and hold a gun. How do I get out of here? Getting out of here isn't easy, not by a long shot. The swamps are a real maze of reeds and radioactive quicksand, swarming with terrible monsters and human scum. And I don't know which is worse. Only a guide can lead you safely out of here. We only have a handful of them. Guys I would trust with my life without a second thought. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Because if I let you go, our presence here might not stay a secret for long. What are you trying to say? We're having a very tough time here recently. The emission reduced the number of anomalies in the swamps, which made the area easily accessible for bandits and other vermin. There are so many of them, they'll be setting up camp in our base soon if we don't do something about it. Oh. The problem is that we're not really the fighting type, so we've been steadily losing ground. But you, one look at you, tells me you're a pro in that sort of thing. Your experience can save the lives of many This is the second outpost. We're under attack. I repeat, we're under attack. Help! Help! Well, that's enough chitcha. There's been another attack on our outpost. Help us fight it off. If it makes any difference, some of the boys who saved you are there right now. You still remember how to survive in the zone? Yeah, I remember bits and pieces. Great. Get over to the trader and he'll fit you out with some basic equipment. After that, head straight to the outpost. Once you're outside the base, listen to my advice. I'll try to guide you along. Okay. Trader, a fighter is on his way to you. Issue him with all the equipment he'll need for the mission. Roger that. Hurry, Mark. Oop. I'm gonna say, look at those meaty fingers. Like sausages. Alright. Well, there we go. That's the first part of the game. <laughs> There's more dialogue to come. It's kind of crazy. I'll be right there. At last. Here, take this basic equipment kit. It's designed specifically for patrol missions. So I get bookshot, an ICH-43, a knife, an echo detector, bandages, first aid, anti-radiation drugs, and a repair kit. Thanks. Hey, is it always this stressful here? I've been ordered to issue you some equipment. There's no time for questions. The boys need you now. Yeah, I'm gone. I can count on me. You have my full attention. Good stuff. So, are you ready to go to the outpost? I'm ready. Alrighty, I'll blindfold you until we get there. You understand, I'm sure. We must keep the route secure. Oh, secret. Secure, secret, same thing. Right. Yeah, I still don't really understand that. I suppose that makes more sense because they mentioned the radioactive quicksand. Whoa, that looked odd. 
But no, if you look at the PDA, you can see, like, all... You can see where their base is, but I suppose you can't see where there's quicksand, so... I suppose you wouldn't be able to get through. Alright. Okay, so then I know where there's an anomaly. I've played this beginning part so many times I'm pretty sure I know where they are by heart. There's one right there. You can sometimes find artifacts and anomalies. You can see them, but detectors spot them easily enough. If you get close enough, your detector will indicate the location of the artifact, and then you just pick it up easy as pie. Keep in mind that your current detector isn't exactly top of the line. All right, now he's told me that, I can go and get it. Beep, 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 Jellyfish! Yay, jellyfish artifact. So this gravitational artifact absorbs radioactive particles, reducing the effects of radiation on the body. Very common in the zone. Oh, radiation negative two. That could be quite nice. Especially with some of the other uh, artifacts you can find. Most of them give radiation. Whoa, that's a first. I've never had a bar run in front of me. Oh god. First time for everything, I suppose. <laughs> that threw me off so much. Alright, I'm now bleeding. Good shit. Oh well. It's fine. Uh, I think what I want to do is actually have a knife equipped. Get rid of the detector too. Don't need that equipped. Well no, instead of helping him out and going straight up to him, I may as well go straight ahead. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh god. I want to get whatever, whatever's in here, which is a lot of stuff. More bandages? Hell yeah. Uh oh. Ugh. Oh god. Ah. Are you kidding? I made it. <laughs> I was going to die, but it's fine. Whew. You're right on time, bro. I'm real low on ammo, so let's make the best of it together. I had to use the first aid kit, which blows. Kill the boss! I can't believe I was getting completely fucked up down there. Did I give you a pistol? Kind of blows. Ooh! Is that the pump station? That's the pump station. What's that then? Is that the church? Oh. Oh, boss, of course. Yep, that guy dies. He's just scripted to die. Alright, not bad. Actually, I wonder. It may have killed the boss. Go! Eh. I'm hoping... Yeah, it did, it did, it did. Nice. Yes, pick up most... Ah, oh, well, I got him. <laughs> it, all, it all worked out. I'm surprised I made it back down, to be honest. I think I'm still bleeding, too. Blood bars. Yeah, the bloody things kicked my ass. Screw it, I'll just use a bandage. I should have ample, eventually. Ooh, the weather's looking a bit grim. I really like the uh, the weather mod atmosphere. It's really cool. I think my favourite weather, like type, is uh, foggy. I don't know if I like foggy or very foggy more. They're both really good. Either way, we did it. Nibede. You survived the emission again. again. I'm not oh. even that surprised. Our boys picked you up not far from the tower when things calmed down a bit. You know, Bienpolev was right. You defy scientific explanation. He believes that you acquired some, let's say, unusual abilities, which help you survive anomalous activity that would literally tear anyone else down to atoms. Also, it looks like something is increasing your body's performance in several areas, to the point that our monitoring equipment goes off the scale. Wefe, don't get too excited. There's always a fly in the ointment. Mm -hmm. Every emission harms your nervous system, and if this continues, you will die. You will die. Why do emissions occur this often? A normal emission is the release of energy accumulated in the zone. A discharge, if you like. What is that? But what's happening now is completely different. In my opinion, 
the increasing regularity of these emissions is the zone's response to some sort of serious threat, akin to the response provided by a human immune system. It is difficult to rationally explain coexistence between humans and the zone. The zone tolerates us in some areas and forbids us from going to others. Whatever is beyond the scorcher and further towards the center of the zone is taboo, a place where stalkers are not supposed to set foot. I think that recent events in the zone are related to the fact that someone broke that taboo and made it past the brain scorcher. Mm. Also, I'm sorry to say, I don't understand Russian. I apologize. Someone got past the scorcher, what risk does this pose for the zone? It's hard to say. To answer that question, I would need to know what's in the center of the zone. Some say the monolith, others say the Vishkrat. The more unpretentious ones dream about fields of rare artifacts. I was at the power plant myself, a young specialist at the time, but I don't know what's there now. What I can say is that the scorcher appeared for a reason. It prevents the center of the zone from being reached. People cannot go beyond the brain scorcher. And if we take into account Shadow of Chernobyl, in the center of the zone is the Wish Granter. I should know, we died. I think I actually got one of the fake endings. So when I actually get back around to Shadow of Chernobyl, I'm hoping I can actually get a better ending. Or like, you know, a true ending, not one of the fake ones. Is there a real way past the Scorcher? Even a theoretical chance? I didn't think so until the large emission. Hell, nobody thought so. However, if you consider the emissions to be a defensive reaction, then the answer is obvious. Someone made it through the Scorcher, and the emission was the zone's response. And since the emissions haven't stopped, whoever it was must still be alive. The zone is trying to get them, and it's killing everything that's alive in the process. What is the danger? The danger of such frequent emissions. I know a lot about this zone, but I can't share everything with you. You'll just have to trust me on some things. A system, any system, needs to be in equilibrium. This zone is unstable right now, and this instability is increasing. If the constant emissions aren't stopped, the zone will become so unstable that a new disaster will occur. Which brings us to what Clear Sky is doing. We have tried to prevent that disaster. Prevent the disaster? You're not even strong enough to fight off bandits. You're right. But we do know how to prevent the disaster and stop the emissions. And that means something. <laughs> Lots of confidence you got there. So what's the plan? We have to find out who was in the center of the zone and stop them at any price. And why are you telling me this, of all people? Oh, come on, Sky. You know why he's asking. There's a strange connection between you and the zone. On the one hand, every new emission gradually kills you. On the other hand, you survive in situations where others don't stand a chance. My gut feeling tells me that your abilities, your gift, your curse, call it what you will. They mean you can get through places that others wouldn't even dream of. And at the moment, we need to act very quickly. I think we have what, what would be called the protagonist's curse, where the player character is pretty much a model. <laughs> survive situations other people wouldn't be able to. For plot reasons. Hmm, not sure I want to jump right into thick of things. Why do I have to take part in this? I knew you'd ask that. The answer is simple. If the emissions aren't stopped, your nervous system will burn out and you'll die. Help us and you'll save yourself. Now this may sound like a line from a corny movie, but you really don't have a choice. Well, looks like my options are pretty limited. Unfortunately, yes. So, will you help us? Yes. Then listen carefully. We have made use of all our contacts and connections in the zone. As a result, we know that a certain stalker at the Cordon was asking Sidorovich about some very strange components. Hey! Uh, for the moment, but it's a lead. Sidorovich! Nice. That'll be fine. How do I reach the Cordon? Or the Cordon? They say it weirdly. Through these swamps, of course. How else? But remember what I said. After the emission, a whole army of all kinds of scum turned up in the area. Now they control almost everything. We are under siege, and I'm not exaggerating one bit. So before we can help you get to the Kordan, we have to regain control of the swamps. And with your help, I think we should be able to do it. 
All right, understood. Hooray! Oh, he's a friend. Oh, we're friends now. Oh god, time for more tutorials. Oh, it's Nimble. He's not, actually, he's not actually voiced. Actually, no, he is. When it comes to the tutorial, he's voiced. He's just not voiced for this point. Oh, I automatically joined them. I didn't even realise. Wait a minute, reaching the Great Swamps is easy. Our guides will lead you out, but if you want to actually survive there, you need to learn about the current tactical situation and your PDA's new features. If you're curious about any of that, just ask. Okay. What's the tactical situation like? In a word, shit. In two, deep shit. Our fighters can hardly hold the Great Swamps, they're being constantly pushed back by bandits and monsters. The enemy simply outnumbers us. What must be done to gain control over the swamps? Reduce the enemy's numbers, or to put it simply, shoot down as many as possible of those who are shooting at us. If you don't, our fighters will have no chance of securing the swamps. What are you doing here? Trying to get some rest, assembling pieces of information the guys bring me. Consulting our valiant leader, you, s oh, you see, we guide the close guys' eyes and ears at the swamp. Ah, uh, tutorial time. Tell me about my PDA's new features. Your main guide is the objective section. Your main objective is displayed here, together with a selected additional objective. Mm -hmm. There can be several additional objectives which you can cycle through using these buttons. Most objectives are also displayed on the map, with the exception of rare occasions when your objectives cannot be located. Okay. We will need your help with not only destroying the enemy, but also capturing key positions. In these situations, our fighters will be grateful if you provide covering fire as they capture a position. Mm -hmm. By the way, don't ignore calls for help. Our boys' lives could be at stake. That's kind of misleading. I'll get onto that. Our mark on the map will display additional information. In addition to your objectives, friendly units and identified enemies will also be displayed on the map. Okay, as I'm sure you understand, our main objective is to establish control.